Well, hi, and welcome to Two Worlds Better from Oldham Park in Cheshire, and we're with the Revy Racing Team. The last time we were with Ben Atkins, the owner of Reve Racing, we were at Mallory Park. And that was a test session, excuse these bikes, that was a test session before the season started. But Ben, since then, you've lost a rider, Steve Hislop. Now, can I just ask you, is there any truth to the matter? He was seen drinking in the Isle of Man with young Paul and Wayne. Oh, as bad as they are, I think it'd take more than them to lead him astray. <laughs> no. what, what, what actually happened there? Uh, a pretty sad move, I should think. Yeah, I mean, st I, you know, I got to know Steve last year and he came almost part of the family, my own family, and, the, you know, the family, I've got a lot of time for him. He, we just weren't producing the results with him, that's the, in a nutshell. Uh, we did everything we could for him and uh, things just didn't work out. So, in the end, although it was a bit of a difficult decision to make, you can't shirk those responsibilities and we had to make the decision to let Steve go. But uh, hopefully he'll find himself another ride and have a successful end to his season this year. Because he did fit in well. When I interviewed them both at the beginning of the season, he and John got on well, didn't they? Yeah, and they still do. And there's been no internal problems in the team at all. He's, he's tried everything. I mean, we've tried everything and, and he's tried everything. He's just found it very difficult to come to terms with the 996 Ducati. And, you know, I wish I knew what the problem was, but to put it right and he would still be with us now. Yeah, but one of those things. So, moving on, Ian Simpson, your second uh, runner. Well, not so much second runner, but you also run him in the production series. Yeah, Ian's leading the production, the Power Bike production series now by about 20 odd points. He's he's been very good. Uh, you know, I like to reward loyalty, and I'm hoping that after today's test session on the bike, that he'll come through and want to ride the bike at Holton in the next race. We're halfway through the season now. Five races, or is it six gone now? Five, I think. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> but uh, John's been getting some cracking results, some misfortune, some tumbles, but he's been doing well. He must be pleased with John. Yeah, I mean, the team have had to rely, rely wholly on, on professionalism. Uh, we've had no luck at all. Lady Luck's just not been with us. We've had a difficult time getting to getting grips with the bikes. I mean, the Ducati is a fabulous motorcycle, but it's totally different to anything else on the circuit, as you probably know. So we've had a massive steep learning curve to get up. John's actually produced the goods for us, even when the bike hasn't been on a, in a position to produce those sort of goods. So he's had a great season so far. Um, I think we're about 60-odd points behind Mackenzie at the moment, but I firmly believe that we can still peg that back. There's enough points to be winning the championship, and I'm confident we can go forward and still win the championship. In your enthusiasm, obviously haven't been dampened then. You, you, you still manage a smile. <laughs> Yeah, not at all. I mean, obviously we found it particularly unpleasant, you know, get, you know, with the situation with Steve. I mean, it's been very difficult for the team because you've had John performing really well and that you've had the elation of the team for John and then we've had to temper that with a little bit of sort of despondency, really, with, it, with Steve. And it's, it's not been pleasant for Steve that John's been doing so well. But, I mean, you know, he's, been, he's come through, his character is strong and he's a good guy and, you know, I really want to get across to the public that... You know, we didn't want to do it. It was a situation that was forced on us, and he, did, he deserves a good ride now, and I'm sure he can produce the goods for another team. I'm convinced of it. Is it too early to ask for sort of plans for, for next year? I mean, you've done a lot of groundwork with Ducatis, so you, you're sticking with Ducatis for next year? Yeah, I mean, the signs are at the moment. I'm very happy with Ducatis. It's whether Ducati are going to be happy with us by the end of the season, but uh, the intention is to go forward with Ducati next year. I mean, obviously, I'd, I've made no secrets of the matter. I want to get into World Superbike. But, uh, I mean, if I said another season in British Super right next year, it certainly wouldn't bother me. John Reynolds, man of the moment, certainly the, the man of today. John, you've really been flying out there. How's things going? Yeah, pretty well, Jeff. Um, the last time we raced here, it was a wet weekend, so uh, <clears throat> we haven't really got any dry settings. So it's ideal, actually, we can get out here with the lads and uh, you know get some quick times in. You certainly look wet enough, but that's just perspiration. <laughs> yeah, it's a warm day, isn't it? <laughs> Tell me, John, how things been going this year? I mean, I've been following your progress. You've had the odd tumble, but you've had some good positions as well. A couple of firsts, is it? Yeah, I mean, when we've been on it, we've you know we've either won or we've certainly finished on the roster. And we've had a, I've had a couple of DNFs through crashes and silly things, really. Um, but all in all, the season's going good. The Red Bull Ducati is flying, and the, the team's working well. 
and I'm loving every minute of it. And have you found a difference in the bikes? Again, I've been following, you know, been changing chips and whatnot. This has slowly brought it up to, uh, well, or quickly brought it up to what you wanted. Yeah, I mean, no, it's been quite a long process, really. We've, uh, we've, as I say, been working with different chips and ignition systems yeah. and stuff. But uh, we've also done a lot of work with, with Michelin, with the tyres, and also uh, sorting the geometry of the bike out to suit the way I ride it. Yeah, <laughs> the way you ride it is just something else. I mean, you were getting the front wheel up coming over that um, hill, weren't you? And it was bloody spectacular. I did that for you, Jeff. <laughs> Tell me, can I ask you something about tumbles when you come off? It doesn't seem to deter you at all. I mean, have you trained yourself at this just to ignore the pain or whatever? And do you hit the corner exactly the same next time? Well, not exactly the yeah. same, but you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I mean, usually when you've had a crash, you, you realise why you've done it and how you've done it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I pride myself, and if I do crash, I'll, I'll go faster the next time I'm out there. It's as simple as that, really. But, I mean, it's just par for the course, really. It's a, it's a tough old game, but... Yeah, well, I admire you doing it. I wonder, I thought, do they train themselves at this, you know? But um, it's just, a, it's the way of the racer's life. That's why racers race, and that's why you're good at it. Well, maybe. I mean, you know, some people can crash, and it, it puts them off. And uh, as I say, if you know why you've crashed, you, you hopefully think you're never going to do it again. So that's probably, <laughs> probably why we get back on them again. Well, look, you're currently third in the championship, halfway through the season. So uh, what do you think your chances are? Yeah, I mean, we've got a tough old uh, challenge, really. Neil McKenzie is uh, very fast and very consistent, but um, I feel like we, we need to go out and try and win everything we possibly can do, but, uh, of course, Neil's got other ideas, and so has probably 15 other riders out there. But. Well, I won't do a Murray Walker on you and say it looks as though you've got it in the bag, because that would be fatal, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. anyway, all the best to you for the rest of the season, John. Thank you, Jeff. Excellent. Well, I've got with me Ian Simpson. He's already leading the British Production Championships on a Ducati, but now he's in the superbikes on this one. Ian, you've been going well today. Yeah, really enjoying it. I've, I've been riding, as you say, the, the 916 production bike in the production championship up until now, and this is my first outing on the superbike. So I'm really enjoying it because there's nothing like a superbike for sheer, sheer power and the uh, thrill zone here. So. So, so how are you finding it? I know you've been setting up today. We've seen you altering the suspension and whatnot. Is it a really big difference between the two? Yeah, there is. There's a lot more grip on the sewer bike and it's a lot faster and it ties itself in knots a lot more. So you, it takes a lot more work to, to set it up. But the bike's pretty much set up for Steve Hislop, who rode it before me. So I'm just uh, putting it to, to my sort of specification now and we're getting there with it. So. Well, certainly talking to Ben, uh, he was actually ecstatic over your performance. He thought you were doing absolutely brilliant. I don't know whether he's told you that yet. <laughs> oh, well, I'm trying my best anyway, so I can't You'll get You'll be after more money, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just trying my best, so, yeah, so uh, grateful listen, for the chance. Yeah, you're going to carry on as well in the production class, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. We'll uh, still keep carrying on with that. There's only four races left, so um, hopefully we should have a good chance in that championship. So you're going to be a bit busy guy for the rest of the season then? Yeah, that's right, because we've got a 600 Honda we ride as well, so it's non-stop. <laughs> and you get along well with our man John Reynolds? Ah, I've known John for a long time. I, uh, I've got a lot of respect for him, so um, he's a good teammate to have, because when you've got somebody, a world-class rider like John, it spurs you on a bit to try and try, try and basically keep up with him, really. <laughs> I just saw his ears perk up then as he walked behind us, but there we are. Well, look, I'll, um, I wish you all the best for the rest of the season, and uh, we shall watch your progress avidly. Thanks very much. Okay. Cheers. Roger Marshall, team manager. What a job to have, Roger. You are a lucky chap. <laughs> Look, we've just been looking at these um, super-duper transporters of yours. They must have cost an absolute fortune. Yeah, it did, Jeff, especially one right behind us. Um, we've got a Renault Magnum towing it and then uh, the longest trailer you're allowed to have on the road and uh, to carry the bikes and uh, the spares and uh, obviously the headsets, radio. We have an office just at the front here, right behind us, and that carries all the computer equipment. Uh, we have a TV and a video recorder, so we can show the riders the races, analyse techniques on the track, a bit like football managers we're getting, aren't we? And, uh, you know, all that sort of thing. And also our PR man, Peter Donaldson, and Les Thacker, commercial manager, they can work the computers, we can get the press releases out straight after the event on the track. and. Uh, you know, that's what you have to do in, in this game. I mean, the smaller truck at the other end, it also carries the spurs and, 
and most importantly, you can mash the tea in there and uh, get the sandwiches to the lads. <laughs> yes, very good tea they make as well in Rove Racing. Yeah. But this is all part of the support of running a modern race team, isn't it? You've got to have this kit if you want to do well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the, it's the image of the team now. It's like the garage. It takes five hours to set the garage up and yeah. um, then, you know, potential sponsors they want to see where the money's invested they want to see the job looking right and uh, we're trying to do it as good as formula one car teams or touring cars and this is the image now it's got to it's got to be well tell me just what have you since i last spoke to you i know you've done a lot of development work can you try and sort of encapsulate what you've actually um done to the bike uh, perhaps one of the biggest one the ignition chipping that made a big difference to it we've come an awful long way with the chip jeff yeah it's um Knowing what the chip actually does in there is important as well, and the torque curve, um, it works the fuel injection management system and gives it the fuel at the right part of the throttle. Um, but also with the ProFlex shocks we took on um, with Wayne Lammy, now works full-time nearly for the team, and lots of little things like we noticed a couple of mods on the fairing, and Chris May who's had a chance to catch up with the engines, we've... Uh, change valve timing, found little mods we've done to the engine and it's a package that's now coming together. And you've been happy with the, the tyres all through, you stuck with Michelin's? Yeah, the, I'm really pleased we went with them, they've come up with the goods at every meeting and we've had a little bit of bad luck and uh, they've stuck by us and uh, you know the tyres have been brilliant and especially on Ian Simpson's production bike, we're leading by 21 points in that championship won the North West, second at the TT, and, um, you know, you can, that speaks for itself. And a typical price for these, but I mean, is there such, such a thing as a price? I mean, I've read they're around £50,000. Is that a starting price? I'd say that's minimum because the factory bikes and uh, they're very well maintained, and it's hard to put a price on them when you can't buy something. So if they did come up for sale, you know, you'd be talking 50000 upwards. Yeah, it's a, a lot of money.